In the 21st century, it's hard to imagine that 50 years ago, our society was without the computers and digital devices that fill our everyday lives. In the 1950s, a young boy in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, would find himself growing up to be a pioneer in the development of the digital world. As he grew older, Elwin Burlakamp attended Highlands High School. While it was obvious he was talented in math and science, Elwin also loved music and was in the band. He was on the swim team, he worked on the school newspaper, and was voted class president. He also developed a lifelong friendship with his eighth grade science teacher. I can remember afternoons when he'd stay after school and we'd talk about maybe English literature, maybe the band, or something of that kind. But um, science was his main interest, mathematics. After graduating from Highlands, Elwin attended MIT, perhaps the country's most prestigious school in engineering. In just six years, he earned his bachelor's, his master's, and his PhD in electrical engineering. His interest coming out of college was information theory, specifically decoding theory. In communication, you're trying to send information from here to there, and you know, it's whatever phone lines you've got or microwaves you've got or whatever, if you send things fast enough, you're gonna make a few mistakes. So that when you read it back, it's not all there. The technology existed to encode and digitize a signal into the language of ones and zeros and send it to the destination. For example, music to a CD. But it was decoding this signal as the music played in the CD player where the problem to correct these mistakes existed. And this was what Elwin Burlakamp would eventually solve. The problems I solved in my PhD thesis had to do with uh, bounds on what was possible and what wasn't possible. Coming out of MIT, his writings on what was possible drew attention. It was the heyday of the space race, and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, was designing satellites to explore the solar system. One big obstacle was how to decode the images these satellites would send back to Earth, and they turned to the young man from Kentucky. The program was well-funded. It was trying to communicate with deep space, meaning further than the moon, like satellites and probes going off to Mars and Venus, you know. And, and hey, these are hard communication problems, right? I mean, you not only need your antennas and everything, but you need a lot of coding, because particularly on, with pictures or whatever you're trying to send back, you see, you get big antenna on the ground, uh, and you can do quite a bit of computing on the ground, <clears throat> but you don't have much power on the spacecraft. Surrounded by other great minds of the day, what Burlokamp learned in the high-powered atmosphere of JPL would lead him deeper into the mathematical world of decoding digital information. In 1968, he wrote a book simply titled Algebraic Coding Theory, constructing a set of mathematical algorithms that to this day, a half century later, is still part of the cutting edge of information and communication technology. John Deering was now principal at Highlands and remembers receiving the book at his office. And Aline Anderson, who was our secretary, came in and said, John, there's no purchase order for these books. And that, of course, was a no-no. You did not buy something without a purchase order. So we looked at it, and the dust jacket of Burlicamp, 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 across the... I said, this is Elwin's book. And um, that, was, that was a delightful day. I cannot read the book. <laughs> it's totally mathematics from cover to cover. With this seminal work, Burlakamp now made it possible for digital devices to transfer large amounts of information accurately, and the digital world would take a large step forward. The reliability of the messages you're trying to send is not that limited by the reliability of the channel. So you can have a noisy channel, so every bit I send you, only 95% of them get through without being changed but I can still take a message of thousands of bits and get the whole thing through to you with enormously high probability, like 0.999999. You're gonna get the whole file right. 
there's always a trade-off between how much effort you spend and how many errors you can fix. And Elwin's algorithm allowed people to uh, do it much faster, which is the same as much cheaper. He really enabled communications and memory storage. This young man from Fort Thomas would even have his work right out to the edge of the solar system. Elwin's uh, programs were used in the exploration of deep space in the sense that they were uh, sent with the probes that were sent up, and it was the Voyager series of probes. Uh, they, were, they were there, traveling around the planets. Still do. Listening to Burlicamp, you realize that, while humble, he understands what he accomplished, but he became frustrated when others did not recognize the potential of his work. They, they would implement it in a way that was botched up. And the rumor was that Burley Camp's algorithms were not practical to implement. And this got under my skin, so. Wanting to get it right led Elwin to create Cyclotomics, a company working with others to develop uses for his algorithms. He proved to be as successful in business as in mathematics, and it would lead him again to the far reaches of space. NASA was developing the Hubble Space Telescope, and they faced the problem of downloading large images. Again, Elwin Burlakamp was called upon to develop the decoding that would provide beautiful images of galaxies far away and crystal clear details of star formation. As a boy in Fort Thomas, Elwin learned to love games, in particular, a game called Dots and Boxes. As a mathematician, he has continued his love of games and has led others to find game theory not only enjoyable, but a great teaching tool. Some of the best and most fruitful advances uh, occur when you get two disciplines and find a way to connect them somehow or other. Today, Elwin continues his passion while lecturing game theory. But just as his eighth grade teacher back at Highlands mentored him, he takes pride knowing he is helping to lead the next generation of mathematicians. Some people get alarmed, say, gee, I'm over the hill. I say, no, we've succeeded. We, we've brought along another generation who's better than us. I mean, what, what, more can we, what more can we hope for? This is progress, I mean, this is good.